it, it's really an issue in the United States in a big way, um, and also to some extent in the Muslim world. And I think the, fun, the, the issue fundamentally is what is the nature of God's interaction with the world? What is the nature of God's interaction with the world? So um, there is a habit among extreme Protestants and also in much of the Muslim world to think that God is the only cause, not just the first cause, but the only cause of everything that exists. So God is like a watchmaker, like, um, uh, like a manufacturer of every detail. Um, the traditional habit, um, certainly in Western Catholic Christianity, since the Middle Ages at least, has been God cultivates creation, not manufactures creation. So, so God is working in, in, with creation, um, more like um, God acting like a gardener, a gardener, rather than a manufacturer. And so I think it's interesting if you look at the Catholic-Protestant divide on evolution. Evolution has been less of a problem in the Catholic world than in the Protestant world, but it comes back to metaphysics. It comes back to how the, um, one believes God interacts with the world. If you believe God is the only cause, then evolution is a problem because um, it means, for several reasons, it means you've got a problem of suffering. It means also um, that there seems to be a conflict between uh, um, what your religion tells you and what the science tells you. But if you think God interacts by creating a world, creatures that create other creatures, and God works through secondary causes, um, then uh, an evolutionary model seems quite natural. It's quite a natural way of thinking. Now there are still some problems, but it's less, it's less of, a, of a sense of conflict. So I think um, the issue fundamentally comes back to the metaphysics, comes back to the, the, the philosophy of how God interacts with the world. But there's one other issue um, with um, evolution and creation, which is that um, when describing evolution, often very powerful metaphors are used, very powerful metaphors. So for example, in my country, um, uh, we have the, uh, the, the atheist Richard Dawkins, and he is famous for using phrases like the selfish gene. And there are other books called, the, there's another book called the selfless gene, and there's another book called The Selfish Genius, which is about Richard Dawkins. Um, but the, um, the interesting thing is genes are not selfish or selfless. They're just things. <laughs> but, but, meta but powerful metaphors have been added to the description of nature. And, that ha and they often have ethical implications. So I think sometimes religious people get worried, and not without some reason because a, a powerful narrative is being proposed for society with ethical effects as well. Because if you believe that it's all about being selfish to be successful, then of course society based on those principles will be very different from a society where sacrificial love, for example, is regarded as a high principle. So people get, I think um, the issues are over philosophy and, 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 and also over ethics, particularly with the use of powerful metaphors. I think we must be very careful with the, uh, um, with the metaphors we use and not use the authority of science to there justify um, these overpowerful metaphors.